Hi everyone, I'm Kylie the Jellyfish. Today I'm going to make a video for my series How to Color Your Hair for Beginners at Home. I have a bunch of videos in this series already, so if you haven't heard of me or ever seen any of my other videos, please check out this thing. What is this thing called? A card? Yeah, it's a card. Yeah, yeah, it's a card. Ha! Ah, good one. Okay card right there check it out because that is the playlist to all of my other videos in this series that is extremely helpful if you don't know how to color your hair at home for beginners and even if you have colored your hair before there's a lot of good tips and tricks in there i have been a hairstylist for almost four years already and i learned how to do hair at home in my own room and you can go back as far as you want on my channel and see the beginning of it because in the beginning I did not know what I was doing but over time trial and error you just figure things out I am going to be talking about how to color your hair depending on your face shape or <sighs> basically I'm gonna be talking about the current trends or e-girl trends happening right now with hair color and what they do for your face shape the singer Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish has the Hot Roots trend, which I was a big fan of before she even did it, and now everyone calls it Billie Eilish hair. But that's just kind of how things go in pop culture. I always thought it was a very good idea for people with compromised hair that decided to cover it with dark color to enjoy color, but in a very healthy way, because you're able to safely lift your regrowth as it comes out of your head but what this does I do think is lift your features quite a bit and if you could think about contouring on the face dark pulls in light pushes out which is why on the areas we want to push out on our face we add highlighter or brighter colors and if we want to bring something in we add darker colors to those areas the same thing goes for your hair if you are doing a balayage or a foil application on someone professionally you're going to pay attention to what zones on that person you want to bring in or bring out think about it this way if you do have black hair on the bottom and bright or neon hair on top whether that is neon green like Billie Eilish or pastel purple or bright pink or something like that, um, that color is going to push out and it's going to look bigger than the rest of your hair. So when someone looks at you, their eye is instantly attracted to the very top of your head because that's the brightest zone on your entire head and face. Um, so what this might do for someone is kind of elongate the top of their head. So this might be weird if you if you feel like you have like kind of a flat head on the top, this is kind of a good trend to follow because it can it can sort of just make your it will make I don't know, it's not gonna make you look like an egghead necessarily, but like it's going to give you more height on top when you have bleached hair uh, up against your scalp, up around the scalp zone. Bleached hair, is drier so it absorbs oil faster you don't have to wash your hair as much as you might before because your dry bleached hair is absorbing that oil that you're producing to an extent that also can add volume to your hair because when the hair surrounding your scalp is drier obviously it's a little bit fluffier so it's a little bit more volumizing so if you zhuzh it like this it just gets bigger and fluffier and if you desire volume because maybe you have fine hair or flat hair it's a great trend because you're just gonna get so much body out of your hair the nice thing about this is eventually if you keep touching it up like Billie Eilish you're, you're gonna just grow it out and grow it out and grow it out and after two years you should have about 12 inches of growth which is around right here I think yeah, like around collarbone length from the top of the head is about 12 inches. And by then, you could probably cut it off at a bob and have solidly healthy, healthier um, bleached hair. Now, the money chunk. The money chunk trend. Okay, so I call this a money chunk. This is a term I have coined myself. I've never heard anyone else use it before. But basically, in the professional industry of hair, um, a trend that has been going on way longer than e-girls existing is called a money piece. 
and a money piece is when someone with a balayaged blonde hair or highlighted blonde hair has a concentrated piece of blonde right in the front where they part their hair. That's called a money piece because it's just like a little money shot on the front of the face, like boop. It's bright and cute and it happens in nature because the hairline is finer on blondes. So um, that's just something that really brings out the face and, and brightens up the face a lot. And it also opens the face a lot. But a money chunk is when it's a bigger, thicker chunk of hair that is typically a little bit more like, um, it kind of surrounds the entire hairline, I would say. What this trend actually does for the face shape is either elongate it if you have hair that parts down the middle, or this actually depends on how long the hair in the front of your face is. Um, because, okay, if you have a bob and you do the money chunk, and it only comes to about right here, and it kind of ends right where your chin ends, think about these bleached or colored pieces framing the sides of your face. That is actually bringing out your face, um, which will create a wider face shape. So if someone has a really long or slender face, it can actually even out and elongate your face shape by adding like a little bit more brightness surrounding the sides of your face, which also in return can like reflect light coming from any certain angles to like highlight the parts of your face that are too sunken in. Now, if you are feeling too wide, I feel like majority of people feel rounder than they really are, but most of the time if you feel round, you don't want to feel rounder. If the hair in the front of your face is longer than your chin, mid, neck, or below, this look will actually elongate your face. The higher the money chunk is, as far as the top of your head, that's going to elongate the top of your head. The hairs coming down, extending further than your chin, bring down the head shape. <sighs> okay, peekaboo. So a peekaboo is um, a big trend a lot of people have been loving lately. Uh, actually, it's been around for like at least 10 years or so much much longer technically but um, I've only been a hairstylist for four years. A peekaboo is when the underneath of your hair is colored a different color and the top is either natural, darker, or different color. Um, typically the original peekaboo would kind of just be the nape of the head so here and below but more, more recently Narcissa Malfoy hair has been trending. A lot of people really like to repost those photos of girls where there's bleach blonde hair underneath brown hair that starts at the temple and it kind of comes all the way around to the higher occipital or lower crown of the head. So you're gonna have like all of this underneath is colored and the top dark or just different. Now that opens up the face and brightens from underneath. And it can actually distract from the upper face. So if you feel like you have a weird forehead, or if you feel like you just don't like your upper face very much, it's a fantastic style of color blocking your hair. Because when you bring your hair forward from underneath, also would naturally push your hair behind the ears a little bit. You have all of this hair on both sides, if it's higher up, and then you also have all this hair underneath lighter. What this is doing is any light facing you in the room is hitting the lighter and brighter areas of your hair and illuminating your features from underneath. So this can brighten up your complexion if it's a color that complements your skin tone and it can open up your face from below. If you are a little bit pear-shaped, like in your face, not your body. Um, so if, if you feel like, I guess the top of your head is more narrow and smaller, and the bottom half of your face is larger or more rounded at the jawline, this isn't a very complimentary style because you're highlighting your neck and you're highlighting your jawline. Um, this could be great for someone who loves their jawline and they think that they're nice and like chiseled because it only accentuates what you already like about yourself. I wanted to add a quick disclaimer because I wanted to remind everybody that no matter what, 
if you love yourself the way you are, that is all that matters. I don't think that you should listen at all to everyone else's opinions on what you should look like. So if you like something about yourself, it doesn't matter if it's conventionally attractive to the rest of society, but these are just simply tips for people who just need some guidance to understand the way highlighting and contouring and hair works with face shapes. Okay, love yourself and bye. And uh, so split dye. Split dye is half and half hair, so that's straight down the middle. One side is one color, one side is another color. Typically it would be like a vibrant color and a dark color. So it would be like pastel pink and black or blue and black, something like that. This is a really great versatile color blocking for absolutely anyone to wear. I would say it doesn't really matter what your face shape is, it's going to complement you because your face is, you know, supposedly symmetrical. Of course, everyone is crooked in their own ways on their face, no one's perfect, but overall, you do have two eyes and two nostrils coming out this way, two cheekbones. When you smile, you smile on both sides, you have two ears. You're, you're basically a symmetrical person to an extent, which means that when you have one half of your hair done, or the other half of your done, it only sets more balance within your face. And it doesn't quite matter too much that one side is brighter and one side is darker, because what it can actually do is cut your face in half visually and give you a just overall balanced look with light and darkness and this can actually just it can complement absolutely anybody because of the symmetry and because of the balance being very attractive to the eye um, subconsciously of course so a pie section a pie piece a pie section hair um, I call this pie section hair I'm sure there's other things to call it um, someone may call it like a pinwheel section or like a yeah I call it a pie slice Okay, let's call it a pie slice together. Hashtag, Kylie said pie slice. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is my client, Veronica, and I did a pie slice on her. I also did a pie slice on my friend, Dan, and there's plenty of people in this world who have pie slices on their head. Typically, they are off center. You can have one straight down the center, but let's just for, uh, for the sake of things, pretend that all of them are off to the side because I feel like if we're talking about straight down the center, we might as well be talking about the money chunk and how that elongates the face. So if we are going off center pie slicing, this is just like a triangular block section that is colored a different color from the rest of your hair. And what this is due, assuming that it is a brighter color than the rest of your hair, you are actually doing the same thing as half and half hair, where you're kind of creating angularity and you're creating misshapen balance throughout your hair and this can actually look really cool because a lot of people like their hair sideswept it doesn't matter like if you feel too wide on the bottom of your face or you feel too wide on the top of your face you can actually just cut your face in half visually with the balance of light and darkness next to each other and that gives you a really nice directional flow. Um, so I would say it's really good for absolutely anybody, someone with a diamond shaped face. Um, I do think the nice thing about pie sectioning is it does have its own form of geometric angularity as in you know obviously there's a lot of angles in a triangle and it's a very sharp shape and if somebody has bangs too it's going to add like a very good amount of like peekaboo angularity in the hair that can actually accentuate angularity within the the structure of your features so if you already have a nice jawline angularity it's going to add accentuation to those angles. A line on the nose going this way, a line from temple to nostril, a line from cheekbone to mouth, a line from the jawline to the chin. 
and all of these lines can line up with having an angular shape on the uh, pie section. But I would say overall, it, it is actually really good for someone with a round shape or really soft, rounded, supple features of their face because it does accentuate angularity in anybody, not just someone who's already angular. Or if you're the type of person that feels too bony, like if you're bothered by how... Some people really do struggle with being like too skinny too, so like if you feel like your cheekbones are too prominent, um, or that your jawline or your nose... Oh yeah, if your nose is really big and you dislike that about yourself, um, maybe angularity around your face might not necessarily be the best idea because it's only going to accentuate that further. So the reason why I didn't actually get into explaining specific face shapes like triangle, circle, square, heart shape face um, is because it's actually pretty difficult to identify yourself as a face shape um, because in the end, you know, like you, you, have, you have cheeks, you have a chin, you have a hairline and a lot of people will just kind of feel like it gets confusing from there because most people have a combination face shape. Very few people have like specifically a distinct square. I do think I might make an entirely separate video in the future on face shapes because earlier a year ago, like not 2020 but the year before that, I taught two different classes on face shapes, how to cut bangs in order to frame the face properly as well as how to cut barber cuts or traditional men's cuts uh, to frame the face with shorter hair depending on your hairline and how wide and angular your jawline is. So I don't want to get too far into that because there are actually a lot of other videos I think I've seen on the internet about face shapes. Um, there's also plenty of diagrams on Pinterest. Um, like I said, one day I will talk more about it. But if you are curious about bangs at all, I do have a video um, how to cut your bangs in four different ways. In this video, I explain in depth how to cut your hair. And I not, you don't even have to cut your bangs to understand this, but really it does actually give you a good idea the way cutting works and how framing your face works. I also give you examples as to which face shapes look the best with which bang types. So that video will help you a little bit understand uh, the way face shapes might work. But please let me know in the comments if you really want to see that video sooner than later about specifically face shapes alone. Generally when I do have a client in my chair though, I really like to just identify them by what they feel the most. So I'm not gonna like pull back their hair and be like, okay, you are a diamond this means you have to have this haircut like I'm not that intense about it I really do think I have to read what the client feels because even if people aren't sure about what they like and what they want most people know how they feel about their face um, I think you could even agree if you look at your face sometimes you're bothered by how wide your face is or sometimes if you look at your hairline you're bothered by how how like so, okay so sometimes these baby hairs at the hairline grow further in for some people or some people have a widow's peak or some people have a really straight across hairline with really far temples which would create more of a square shape. Understanding face shape has to do with how wide the top half or how wide the bottom half is as well as how angular it is so if it's really soft or really sharp both on top and bottom and sometimes in the middle. Um, but that's generally, I think that's all I want to talk about. If someone feels round, we're just going to consider them round. I'm not going to tell them, actually, you're not round, so don't worry about avoiding cuts that are bad for round faces. Because if you already feel round, I'm not going to give you a cut that's going to make you feel even more round. Does that make sense? Okay, I think I've talked a little bit too much in this video, so I am going to go... I appreciate you guys listening to me and loving me and watching me and giving me some support. Uh, give me more support by subscribing to me if you haven't already because I love making these videos and it would mean a lot to me. Um, and like this video, comment down below if this video helped you out, and I'll see you guys in another video. Stay epic everyone! Uh, also, 
click on these videos that pop up right on this screen after I go. Stay epic everyone, bye!